Greetings, I'm Mike Holland. I'm a member of the Cellar Masters of Los Angeles Home Winemaking Club, and a club member had asked me to do a demonstration video on filtering. And through the magic of video, we are going to do a flashback. And so in other words, I've already shot all of the steps leading up to filtering the wine, and this is our end result right here. So. So here are the other players in our filtering process. From start to finish, we have the source wine. In this case, it's going to be five gallons of chilled Chardonnay. A gallon bottle of sanitizer, which we, the filters, of course, are soaking in that bucket there. A mini jet, which is the source of our filtration. And I'm not going to show you all of the hooking up of hoses. We'll just skip all that. Okay, so the filters have now been put into the filtration system as you can see there's three of them here and the hoses are hooked up there's three hoses there is the intake hose which is going to go from the source line to the impeller pump then there is the hose that goes from the pump to the filter array it's a little hard to see but it's right there and then the outlet which is from the filters when it's all said and done down to the final destination which is going to be our carboy. Now all of those hoses, all three of them right now, are sitting in our jug of sanitizer because we're going to go ahead and we're going to sanitize the filters with standard uh, bimetasulfite and we're going to let that run for about five minutes and so once it's finished then we'll swap it over for uh, water. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the pump, see if it starts to do an intake. All right, fine. So now that's starting to flow, which you may or may not be able to see. Next time I'll use colored water for a demonstration like this. So here we've got our timer and we're going to go and let it go for exactly five minutes. All right, now, so now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and prepare to swap out the sanitizer for our first jug of water. Now, why do we do this? Well, because now the filters are sanitized, we need to get them thoroughly rinsed and get the sanitizer taste and the paper taste out of the water that we're going to run through the filtration system. And that's why there's actually two gallons of water here, which I will show you momentarily. Okay, so we've swapped the hoses out, and so now we're running the filtration system through clean water, clean filtered water, and we're going to go ahead and set the timer on that for five minutes, just like we did before. And we'll and by the miracle of video, here we are. Five more minutes have elapsed. All right, great, terrific. Turning off the pump, and I'm moving all of the hoses, all three of the hoses, if I can get them out of here, into the second jug. And so wastewater intake and outtake all go into jug number two. The pump gets turned on again, and it's going to work, and there it goes. And so now this sample of water should taste a lot cleaner and more like water and less like sulfite. So, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our timer again for another five minutes. And so we will be back in a couple of minutes. 
there we go. All right, let's stop that. And so now this particular sample of drinking water should taste a lot better. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of that. I will again really want to eliminate is that paper filter taste. And I discovered that if I just went through one gallon of water, there was still some paper residual. But by adding a second gallon of water, I'm able to eliminate that uh, paper taste in the, uh, in the final wine. Now, of course, keeping in mind, too, that because I don't have water piped into my garage, this is a closed system, so everything has to be brought in. I'm going to uh, shut this off, and I'm going to actually set everything up for the final filtration, and we'll get started. Okay, so now we're ready for the final sequence of filtering. So let's go through the entire process. Source wine. We have a stainless steel racking cane that is hooked up to our tubing, and the tubing is going to run all the way down to the intake of the filter. It is then going to go into the filter block at the bottom. It is going to come out the filter block at the top and it's going to go to this carboy, which will show us exactly what's going on with the wine once it hits the uh, the vessel. In addition to that the waste wine is going to go down this tube all the way down to a dedicated jug on the floor I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start the process. So, this is live. I'm going to turn the switch on. And there we go, there we go, there we go. Into the impeller pump. It's coming out, going into our clean jug. And there should be some, some CO2. Let's see if we can adjust that. Okay, so we're getting good, clean wine. If we get a lot of CO2, that's a good thing. We don't want CO2 in our final wine. And I'm filtering it cold specifically for that reason, because cold liquids will dispel CO2 faster than liquids at room temperature. If you want to try an experiment, take two bottles of soda, the same soda, Put one in the fridge, keep one at room temp, open them both up. And then over a period of days, go ahead and open them both up at the same time and see which one loses its gas the fastest. And the answer is going to be the cold one. At room temperature, liquids like this will hold on to their gases better than cold liquids. Try it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull a small sample. Which so 10 months ago, this Chardonnay was just juice. Here in late July, we're now going to be filtering it and bottling it probably in the next few weeks. But it is clear, even with the opaque and the glass because it's cold, there is not a lot of stuff in it. There shouldn't be at this point of the game. It's got nice flavor. It will probably continue to improve in bottle. I will do a, sul a sulfide test to verify that in fact it has finished everything that it's supposed to have finished, but it's looking pretty good. And as you can see, there's a little bit of CO2 coming up in the, uh, in the finished wine. That's good. That's what we want. And we'll stir it a few times over the next week or two, next two or three weeks before uh, scheduling a bottling session. And so that's basically what the process looks like. And just to say we hadn't forgotten about the waste jug, here is the waste jug. And yes, there is a little bit of wine showing up in there. Uh, that is basically part of the angel share. That is just lost wine. It happens. Boy, wasn't that fascinating. I should mention, by the way, that uh, my little garage winery is very, very small, and so if you would notice anything was cramped, that's the reason why our winery is so small. How small is it? Our winery is so small that the mice have to, are hunchbacked. Our winery is so small. How small is it? We have to step outside to change our minds. So, what all of this has resulted in is you have two carboys of filtered Chardonnay 
all of these of this wine is going to be filtered in or it's going to be racked into this 7.75 keg down here it's going to be topped off with gas and we're just going to set that aside and we're going to leave it alone until we are ready to bottle it which is a completely another video which we may or may not do this year but thank you for watching enjoy yourselves stay safe and we'll see you on the next one bye bye